Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to be painting one of the Unity Council Guard from Anvil Industries. These are from the old Afterlife range, which unfortunately the game itself kind of petered out. It isn't still in production, but both the Republic Grenadiers and the Unity Council have experienced a new lease of life coming into the realm of 3D printing. So we're hoping to see these coming out in resin soon as well, same as with most of the other stuff from the Anvil Digital Forge, but today I wanted to have a little bit of fun just painting something nice and quick and with a couple of little interesting spots like the smoke effect on the grenade. So all of the paints for this will be listed in the description below along with the recipe for the base. Let's get started. So just before we get to the painting, I do want to briefly touch on the kits themselves and why I really like using the digital versions of some of these things available from Anvil. If you take a look at this fella's helmet here, he's got a square boxy sort of faceplate versus the actual standard helmet, which is more of a, it's a little bit difficult to see, but it is more of a motorcycle helmet sort of look. Now what I've done is taken the Honor Guard helmet, so here's one of those guys, and the crest itself that's sitting on the back of that helmet is part of a, a multi-shell item, meaning you can crack open the STL in something like Mesh Mixer or Blender and just delete it. <laughs> and uh, even for the pre-supported stuff, you can leave just a couple of the supports for the thing here intact, it won't matter. And then I've got the helmet that I actually really wanted. I prefer that slightly blockier look. And that is one of the real advantages to you know having a printer versus just having the resin parts. Although it wouldn't be too difficult to just trim that off if you've got that at home. Anyhow, let's get on to painting. So the first color we're going to apply is going to be to his trousers. Now for this I'm using gray blue from Vallejo. Although Fenris gray, sorry, uh, rust gray it is now, or wolf gray from Army Painter will work just as well. This will cover very well over a light gray primer. Now here I have used Vallejo's light gray, uh, but in this instance, it honestly doesn't matter too much. You could use gray here. Anything nice and light is gonna be fine. And when it comes to the, like he's got these rubberized sort of covers over his legs, you can just paint straight over the top of those. There isn't really a huge amount of uh, visible leg on this guy. Now that won't take you long to do at all. We're going to move on now to his trench coat, and I want to quickly note the original Unity Council guards these guys, uh, they had a dark brown trench coat. Now, you might use something like Flat Earth from Vallejo, or even something like Thondio Brown from Citadel. I am going to use here Mournfang Brown. The reason being, this is a little bit lighter, and a little bit warmer than, you know, the classics, as it were. Uh, but I like... I think this is going to just look a little bit better when we think about our tabletop distances. So I'm using my medium layer brush, medium layer brush, medium base brush rather, for most of this. But in some areas I'm going to switch on down to a smaller brush. I'm not too fussed if I hit some of these other areas. And you'll see straight away that I am going to need to come back and give this a second coat, but just a tiny wee bit of paint, so water in your paint. Goodness me, I cannot talk today which is a problem really. A tiny wee bit of water in your paint is going to help this flow. And make sure that you've got a nice smooth base coat. Now after two coats you're going to have a nice rich brown. But one thing I am going to do, I have here a little old makeup brush. Now, these are really useful for dry brushing because the soft bristles means you can't ordinarily apply too much pressure. I've got some Golgfag brown and I have worked most of it off into a bit of kitchen towel. Uh, you can either dry brush the edge of the base or a bit of old black cardboard, you know, prime that in black, just to see how much you're going to leave behind. You'll see I'm not really looking to do any highlighting with this. All I want to do is lightly change up some of the color here so that there's a little bit of variation on those large broad areas. And I'm just going to pass over this a few times to make that brown a little bit warmer. Dry brushing against the grain of any detail, so you'll see sideways here to catch the uh, folds in his jacket. But yeah, as much or as little of this as you like. This is really purely optional. Uh, I just think it looks cool and doesn't take a lot of work. 
you'll see that adds a little bit of texture to what is otherwise quite a flat surface in some areas. Really good for leather, any clothing or fur where you want a little bit of texture, or even large areas of skin. Dry brushing, I think, gets a kind of a bad rap about being a, a baby's first technique, but with a bit of practice, I think it's actually really useful, no matter what level you're at. I've got now some black grey from Vallejo, and this is my go-to color when it comes to dark leather. So what I'm going to do is paint in the leather, what would this be, the leg mounts or straps. I'm going to try and avoid the panels of armor, because I want to paint those white, and if I can avoid having to paint white over a dark grey like this, all the better. I'm going to paint in his boots with this too, and the little straps on his van braces. Let's get in there with this. And you'll see that this will cover in one coat. If you want to stick to Citadel, then Eschen Grey or Corvus Black are quite close to this. But I think you'll see why I would go for Black Grey. As well as his boots, I've also painted in his belt and his gloves using this too. I was going to overcomplicate things, but I think the gloves being that same leathery color is going to work fine. It's time now to pick what brand of gun your sci-fi has, and I'm just going to use black. <laughs> you could come up with all sorts of things here, but I'm going to do just a couple of coats of Vallejo's black over the top of this. And quite honestly, it might end up being just the one coat. But as well, what I'm going to do is get into his faceplate and put a coat of this over the top here too. It always gets me how quickly you add character to a miniature like this by taking its face away completely. It's kind of spooky. I have now some Iron Hand Steel, and I want this because this is quite a light base color for metal. So I'm going to flip him around, and I imagine this is kind of a respirator pack or something built into his... You know, this upper body thing, so I'm going to paint that in with a coat of this. And as well, with a slightly smaller brush, I'm going to go around and do the rim here on his grenade. And I'll also paint in just a couple of tiny wee silver details here and there. I don't want to do much of this, to be honest. Once those handful of tiny details are done, you can go back around and finish off any of the other little colors which you might have missed. If you need to tidy up, do that now. The white, of course, we are going to finish in our next stage. So what I have is Agrax Earthshade. I've given this a really good shake. And I've got a nice big brush, but something which is going to keep a point, because this time I want to be able to apply it where I want. I don't necessarily want to bucket this all over the white. Don't worry too much if you do get it on there, but that's not what we're aiming to do. So let's go ahead and cover over all of our colors with some Agrax Earthshade, and you'll see straight away what the uh, <laughs> how that dry brush really helps our brown. But yeah, let's come back once this has had about 20 to 30 minutes to dry, and see what we have. And once your half hour is up, you'll have something that looks like this. And I think particularly on the jacket, you can see what that first dry brush has really done to help add a little more depth than the shade would just by itself. Now we could go ahead, and I am going to later do a couple of extra highlights, but look at how that looks with so little effort. If you're going to chuck models on the table, particularly you need some reinforcements for your bad guys in Stargrave or something, that's just perfect, isn't it? Anyhow, moving on, we're going to paint the white details now. So because we wanted these to be quite clean, we've deliberately left these till near last. What I have is a little bit of Corax white, and I'm going to very carefully paint most of what remains in gray. You'll see this covers really well. Now as well, once I'm finished with the armor plates and his helmet and what have you, I am going to swap on up to a bigger brush and give the smoke cloud a coat of this too. There are a few ways that you can shade white. You might thin down a little Drakenhof nightshade or even non-oil, but what I'm going to do, I want quite a crisp cold white. So I'm going to use apothecary white and just with my medium layer brush, apply a little bit of this over the white panels. You see it goes on nice and smooth, and I'm just going to guide it towards any recesses. What you'll end up with is a faintly blue white finish, with a little bit of shading in the recesses, which I think looks quite cool. If you do want to tidy it up a little more though, you can go back to your Corax white, and just flatten out some of the panels where you might have a little of that apothecary white collected 
more than you would like. And then at this point, a little white scar. And we'll just go ahead and pick out some of the edges with just a little bit of white to make those look a bit sharper. Now that is a little bit more work than I would usually put into a fairly small area of white, but I think it is going to look much better if you do spend that little extra time. We'll move on now and I'm going to paint in the faceplate and I want here a little bit of Cantor blue. What I'm going to do is I've watered this down just a little bit more than usual and I'm going to flip them upside down. Because what I want to do here is kind of get the edges, now there, there aren't any particular edges but there's a crease and I'm going to use this as the area where the light is catching. So you'll see I'm being quite generous with this, just throwing down a vague T-shape towards one side of the face and I'll make sure that that carries on down this little section because I want this to look like it's glowing. Now if you worry that you've applied too much of that you can pop just a little bit of black straight over the top. Now I have some rust gray and we're going to use this for two things. So first off we're going to paint a little line running about halfway into our blue in both directions. So up down we're going to complete that t-shape this is quite difficult to show you with the smoke grenade <laughs> right in the way. And then with that T-shape made, we're going to pop just a tiny bit of white right in the corner and at the opposite corner as well. So down here. And we'll do the same on this lower section. Now the other thing I did was to add just a tiny bit of rust grey to his trousers, but I don't really think you can see it, so you can probably quite safely skip that if you're looking to save time. What I have next is Death Claw Brown, and this is a really nice, almost sort of pale wood colour, which I don't get to use very often, but I'm always glad of a reason to. I'm going to use this as an edge highlight just on some of the areas of the jacket that I really want to accentuate. You'll find that the dry brush actually works really well here as a guide. Now that's relatively quick. It does require that you keep a nice sharp point on your brush and don't overload your brush with paint. You'll find it much easier to control with a little less paint on your brush than you might ordinarily use. I'm now going to go ahead and use some Storm Vermin Fur and just highlight a couple of areas of the black. I don't really need to do too much of this. Just enough to make some of that leather stuff pop out a wee bit. Once you're satisfied with that, again, it's time to pick what you're going to do with your weaponry. Now I've got here a little Necron compound, because I tend to find this is a super simple way of getting a nice finish to these. Raggedy old dry brush, make sure you've worked most of this out onto that kitchen towel. And very lightly, just flick to pick up the edges of detail on your, your sci-fi space pistol. Don't need to go overboard with this, and if you do, don't worry too much because when we matte varnish this as a final stage, it's going to dull this down quite a bit. Now we can move on and start painting our smoke effect. Now I'm using here Blood Angels Red, and it's roughly two parts contrast medium to one red. I want to thin this down a little bit more, and I'm not too worried if it's on a wet palette. Bearing in mind we have already added white to our uh, cloud first, we're going to apply our slightly pinkish contrast all over the whole thing. So go ahead, just bucket it on, and make sure that you are working it into the recesses. It's important here that those little nooks and crannies are getting a good dose of this stuff. Now I don't mind admitting that did settle a little more pink than I was expecting, but not to worry. I have now another one of my makeup brushes and some Prex City White. And what I'm going to do is just start dry brushing our smoke, lightly flicking over the top. And you'll see very quickly we're going to pick out those raised areas while leaving that pinky shade in the recesses, which is just fine. So take your time moving around the whole thing, and you want to approach it, you know, dry brush from a few different angles so that you are getting as much of this as possible. Now you're going to get a slightly stippled textured mess here, which might seem like a downside, but really what we want is a little bit of texture. We want these clouds to look a bit puffy. What I've done now is mix up a fresh batch of that uh, contrast mix, this time three parts of medium to one part of contrast, 
And this will change depending on which contrast color you're using. You know, you're going to have to have a little bit of an experiment. This time I am going to cover from about halfway down, maybe two thirds of the way up. And go over the whole thing again, leaving some of the top area quite white and pale, but deepening the color in the recesses of some areas. And once that's dried, dry brush white again over the whole thing. Now this time your red contrast only about a third of the way up. Then one final white dry brush. And I've swapped down to a smaller brush here, but you don't strictly need to. Then finally what I'll do is take just a little bit of Blood Angels Red straight from the pot here. We're going to use this neat to paint in around some of the very darkest regions right at the base of the cloud. So you don't have to completely cover them. But just anywhere where you want an extremely strong red, you can paint this straight into the recesses to get a slightly more compelling effect. But once this is dried, what I'm going to do is take him outside, hit him with a matte varnish, and you'll see quite quickly what a varnish is going to do to the, uh, to the cloud in particular. It does work quite well for really smoothing out some of these areas. Then what I'll do is hit his faceplate. I'm actually going to hit that with a little bit of gloss varnish. I'll use some art coat for that. And pop on a base. So let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all finished. And there at last, our Unity Council Guard is complete, and I really enjoyed painting this guy. It's been a while since I've just painted a plain brown coat, and I think this turned out really well. A little bit of warmth to him, I think, suits the miniature quite nicely. In the future, I would probably use a green or something for the smoke instead. Uh, I did think the red was going to work quite well, but I think, honestly, a slightly cooler color up there to sort of tie in with the armor might have been a better choice considering how warmly I painted the jacket. But that's just starting to get into the realm of messing around with color theory. We're not too fussed about that. The method itself is pretty simple. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment and all the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy and Jimmy. Your support lets me do this sort of cool stuff any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.